So for the football team, there's been a handful of players uh, that left right after the season ended. Only two more uh, since then in this May transfer portal window, and they are Malcolm Green and Liam Boyd. Malcolm Green being a scholarship player uh, is, is the bigger news. He was uh, a quality cornerback, really played more of the nickel for Clemson. Um, he posted a, a 67 PFF grade each of the last two years, limited to 101 snaps due to injury last year. But he was a quality player, not someone you really want to lose. Um, he's headed to Virginia. Now, um, luckily, Clemson has a lot of depth in, in the secondary. So you see Nate Wiggins. He's uh, He started off last year not playing well, but by the end of the year, he was um, borderline a star, and by the looks of it, by the looks of it in the spring game, he is next in line to be one of these Clemson cornerbacks that goes first, second round of the NFL draft. He looked great. I think there's a big year coming from him. Sheridan Jones is now a fifth-year player. Um, he is steady as they come. He posted a better PFF grade than Malcolm Green uh, last year. Uh, hampered by injuries at points, but when healthy, those are the two best cornerbacks on the team. Toriano Pride um, was a freshman last year, thrust into action a little early. He struggled at times last year, no doubt, but he got better as the year went on. And I think you could see him continue to improve. And maybe he was passing or on the verge of passing Malcolm Green. And perhaps that's part of the reason why Malcolm Green decided to lose. Jalen Lucas had, had surgery. He didn't play in the spring, but he was a big time recruit. And if he gets healthy, he could be an impact player. And then Shelton Lewis looked awesome in the spring game. He's another guy that can, they can contribute. And then you can see they have some youngsters behind them as well. At safety, Andrew Makuba, uh, he was banged up last year, but he's a star when he's healthy. Um, and he looked like he was healthy in the spring game and could have a big year. And then Jalen Phillips is an experienced quality player. But R.J. Mickens, to me, is the most underrated player on Clemson's defense. He is a ball hawk. He, he pulls down interceptions. And I think that the Tigers have got to find a way to get all three of those safeties on the field as much as they can. And that might mean sometimes at the nickel. And maybe that's what was uh, potentially taking snaps away from Malcolm Green, at least in his forecast. Um, and so maybe that's part of why he transferred. Um, and, you know, he's going to Tony Elliott, so we wish him all the best at Virginia. He's going back to his home state. Um, Malcolm Green's from the Richmond area. Um, so perhaps there he could start at cornerback, one of the, you know, the two starting cornerback spots. Uh, and you saw in the NFL draft, cornerbacks can go quite early and get paid really well. Um, we certainly seen it with a lot of Clemson alumni, so it may be in his best interest. And I think, you know, Clemson doesn't want to lose him, obviously, but it's, it's a spot where they can afford to lose him and they've got the depth to make it up without really taking a hit. Um, one thing that has been talked about a good bit that I feel like is a little misleading is the scholarship limit. So Clemson is down to 84 scholarship recruits currently on the roster. Um, they are not over the limit. There's been a talk that there are three over the limit. And and that's true in a sense, but but not in any not in a real way, right? So they had three walk-ons that they put on scholarship last year. And as of as of this moment, two of them won't be able to have those scholarships renewed. That's not against the rules, nor is it any sort of moral uh, breakdown there. Um, when you get a scholarship as a walk-on, it is a one-year agreement that you will be given this and, and maybe renewed next year and maybe not. Um, Hunter Helms perhaps just got his renewed uh, by virtue of Malcolm Green leaving and opening up the scholarship. Um, but Dominic Thomas is uh, likely to be the third string running back. He was awesome in the spring game and he's probably deserving of a scholarship spot. Um, and that may require another play, player leaving through the portal for him to get it. Uh, Philip Lorenzo is a long snapper and he may need another player to leave to get, or he will need another player to leave to get that as well. Um, so the Tigers are not over the limit. They have two more spots that if they open up, they can give to walk on who had it last year. Um, and frankly, you could even consider right now going out and grabbing a wide receiver. They need one. Florida State just lost um, Micah Pittman to the portal. He would be one of Clemson's better wide receivers if, if Clemson wanted to dip into the portal and grab him. Um, Keon Coleman from Michigan State would probably probably be Clemson's best wide receiver, uh, perhaps behind Antonio Williams. Um, he had almost 800 receiving yards last year for Michigan State in a offense that wasn't great. Um, and he's going to look at Florida State. So um, I don't know how long Clemson can keep letting all these stars go to Florida State. I guess we'll find out uh, in September when those two teams play. But uh, Clemson's not over the limit. They have one open scholarship. I imagine that's probably going to Hunter Helms, but we'll find out soon enough. Flipping it over to basketball, um, Coach Brownell has been busy. So the team lost um, Ben Middlebrooks through the transfer portal. They lost Chauncey Gibson, who uh, just redshirted, never actually played for Clemson uh, in a game. Um, 
to the portal. So those aren't huge losses, a backup center and, and a guy who never played. Um, but they also lost their best player in Hunter Tyson, starting power forward. And they lost um, grad transfer who came in for one year, Brevin Galloway. So those are some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, and they're not really adding freshmen who are going to make an immediate impact. As freshmen very rarely make an immediate impact at Clemson. Um, but he went to the portal. Coach Brown went to the portal and added three guys who I think will, will certainly make uh, an impact right away. Um, so there were rumors that uh, Jake Heidbreder would redshirt. He had some sort of back injury. Sounds like now he played through a, a hip injury last year, but is not necessarily expected to redshirt. At least that's not for sure the plan. Uh, he led uh, Air, uh, excuse me, he led Air Force in scoring with 15.1 points per game last year. Um, he shot almost 40% from three. He's six for five. He, he's capable of being a starter for, for Clemson. And I know that you think Air Force, you think Mountain West, like, well, there'll be, there must be some transition to the ACC. You could write those numbers down. But the ACC wasn't good last year. And Clemson's schedule was especially not good as they played some of the weaker teams in the ACC and a weak non-conference schedule. Uh, really very comparable to what Air Force played. Not It's not a big step up in competition uh, from what the two teams did last year. So I think he can come in and, and be an immediate scorer for them, uh, assuming he's healthy. Uh, and almost like a trade in the transfer portal, Ben Middlebrooks, uh, Clemson's backup center, went to NC State. And right after that, you heard that six foot eight uh, kind of guard forward Jack Clark was coming to Clemson. He is not a dominant scorer, but he's a quality scorer who can give you um, you know, he, he averaged nine points, 6.9 rebounds a game last year. You're going to see a lot of, uh, hopefully you'll see a lot of games where he puts up maybe 12 points, seven boards, something like that. 12 points, eight boards, 14 points. Um, he's going to be a really good kind of complimentary piece uh, and all around player for, for Clemson. I expect him to start, uh, right off the jump. Um, he's actually, he was actually only at NC state for a year. He came from LaSalle. He's from, uh, Pennsylvania. So he's coming down for a year at Clemson. I think he can be a big contributor. Uh, and really help Clemson um, stave off the loss um, from from some of the folks they have leaving. And then most recently, the added boss late. He's a six foot ten uh, forward, but but really he'll be used as a backup center. He's basically taking Ben Middlebrook's role. He's a senior. Uh, he started 19 games for uh, UNC Greensboro last year. Not a not a star. Not expecting to come in and start over PJ Hall or anything like that. But he gives Clemson back the depth that they lost with Middlebrook's. And while I really liked Middlebrooks, particularly his upside, you know, he was fouling more than seven, uh, seven fouls per 40 minutes. So he was not a reliable backup for Clemson. I think he will become potentially a reliable, good starter, a big time rim protector, but that's not what he was last season. So just comparing to last season's Middlebrooks versus this season's uh, Basilate, I think it could be an upgrade, uh, mainly because uh, he doesn't foul. Um, so I think you have a, a reliable big man with experience who can come in, knows what his role is going to be, and he can contribute in that role. So when we look at next year's roster for Clemson, uh, it's pretty solid. Um, I don't know that it's an upgrade over last year, and it's really, really hard to upgrade when you lose your best player in Hunter Tyson. Um, but if Chase Hunter stays healthy, you have him, his little brother Dylan, uh, and Josh Beadle. That's a a solid uh, group of point guards. Um, Hemingway is coming back. He's a veteran, but I think Jake Heidretter uh, ha has a shot and perhaps deserves. We'll see how they play, but to start over him, um, you know, he averaged over 15 points a game in the Mountain West. And then I think Jack Clark um, could start. And then Chauncey Wiggins and RJ Godfrey were both freshmen. And I think we like what they we saw from them last year. I think they both could eventually be starters for Clemson, but given the transfers, I don't think it makes a ton of sense that they're going to start. Um, Otherwise, I think it would have been harder to land those transfers if that was the case. Ian Shefflin played a lot of three last year with Hunter Tyson at, at the four. I imagine they'd, they'd push him up. But either way, you could put Jack Clark at the four if if that makes more sense. It's it's kind of six of one half dozen of the other. But Ian Shefflin's a returning starter who was good. And, and kind of like Middlebrooks, he was good last year, but getting better. And you saw flashes of him being really good. So if he could take a step, that's key. And then P.J. Hall. If he's healthy, he could be a star. We need him to stay healthy. It's really critical that Clemson has P.J. Hall and Chase Hunter stay healthy. Um, really can't afford injuries, especially to Hall, but really to either of those. Uh, both of them at times have been a little injury prone. So that's a big if. But if they stay healthy, it seems like Brad Brownell has used the portal to fill holes um, and really avoid a drop off. Now, last year they weren't a tournament team. They lost the first round of NIT to um, you know Morehouse or Moorhead State. So... Um, you know, last year wasn't acceptable. They need to get better, um, but they have a chance to. So, you know, for me and so many fans, I'm, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get emotionally invested and go through that again. Um, 
they're sucking me in and they've got a decent roster here. They'll probably suck you in too. Um, so anyway, I have some more videos coming out, NFL draft and some other things. Uh, we got Clemson Hall of Fame uh, inductees announced. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, if you're not already, please subscribe to this channel. You can click subscribe below. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.